themselves for real. LSU, number one, Alabama's still not far behind. There's a lot of conversation about the SEC possibly getting two teams in the college football playoff. If that happens, how far behind are we at eight teams? Do you want to see us go to eight teams? I, I personally don't. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, I think it's, you know, we, we have this playoff discussion. It's, it's not going to be right to the to everybody. Right. Um, and I think people can respect that. I think, I, honestly, I believe that's what keeps the attention um, of the playoffs. We went from two to four. I don't think people realize how big of a jump that is. That's true. Right? I don't think people realize that. So, you know, it's but it's natural human instinct to talk about, oh, so this happened with UCF and TCU didn't get in that year and Michigan State got in and we knew they weren't that good. So obviously that conversation starts to revolve around uh, what's going on. Last year, you could make a hard argument that Georgia was the number four team in the country. But at the end of the day, man, that's that's why you play them. Like, that's why you, that's the excitement of this game. And I think that, I honestly believe that college football, as much as people thought it would create this hierarchy of teams and everybody else, what has it created is conversation for everybody to pay attention to all the college football. Right. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Now, if you outside looking in, it sucks, right? <laughs> it just does. Sure but but guess what? That's 99% of the teams in the country. True. You know, so I, I think when, when we start to get into the territory of six or eight, I get into the conversation of at what point do we not consider these players pro football players? At what point do we start to talk about, well, you know, this is this is too much for an 18-year-old to do at a time when finals are going on and at a time when Christmas break is up. Um, I'm one of those guys, right? I'm not a poor me's guy, but I know, you know, as a football player, you know some things you're giving up. And we start talking about playing games in the in the deep July, I mean, deep January. That's a lot, man, you know? It's hard to talk about coming to new school in 2019, 2020. You're not going to be old school. You played defense yeah. then. I played tight end. That was a whole other era. Yeah. The tight end has changed so different. My nephew yeah. is in high school. He's a junior. And he said he plays tight end, but he's that big around. Yeah. I was like, no, you don't play tight end. You play wide receiver. <laughs> so tell me what you feel the impact on the new tight end, whether it's a wide out or close yeah. in. What happened to the old school? Are they going to come what, back? What, what? No, they're not coming back. Y'all should be familiar with that because they had a guy named Evan Ingram here. Yeah. That, that position. Yeah. It's been, I mean, look, that the those days of the, and look, it's good to have those guys, but as far as being featured and the guys that we gonna know, yeah. they gonna be pass catching tight ends. Yeah. It's gonna be Travis Kelsey. It's gonna be Evan Ingram. It's gonna be Ertz in, in Philly. Like, that's the new breed. Yeah. You know? And um, I think that's more of a, that's more of a evolutionary thing in football where you find out, you know what, this dude's 6'6". Six, six. He runs a four or five. Maybe I should get him matched up on the same you know, and see if he can make plays. Yeah. So that's that's really what it boiled down to. You still have your inline blockers. The yeah. Ravens right now are the using three tight end, yeah. yeah, three tight end systems. But yeah. with the the ones we'll glorify are the Evan Ingrams of the world. We're probably gonna catch for a thousand yards when yeah. the decide to get good at football. <laughs>